What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and in tonight's episode is going to be your stock market technical analysis update. But before we get into the charts, you know what you gotta do. Go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to the channel to follow along with all of my updates. First up, we'll look at the ticker symbol SPY, which is our S&P 500 ETF. So let's go ahead and crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, so with today's price action on the SPY ETF, we see it going down negative 1.42% on the news that there will be no stimulus package deal before the u.s election now that's not too surprising and i'm willing to bet that the market is not as surprised as it acted because i don't really believe anybody thought there would be a stimulus deal before the election so like i always say stay objective follow the price action and follow the technical trends and everything else is just noise so first we look at the price action and we did get a nice close above the 13 ema as well as above the 20 and we still have that 5 ema trading above that 13 ema so we still have that short-term bullish trend However, if you look at our resistance line, we did say we needed to get a daily close above 342 and we got right up to our resistance line before we got rejected and closed lower. Now there's nothing that says we have to break through resistance at the first attempt and I definitely don't expect to see it break resistance on a day that we get bad news that there's going to be no stimulus. However, we do need to see a close above 342 to get fully bullish on this S&P 500 yet again. So we're still making positive price action movements and we still have that bullish trend in the short term. We are starting to see that 20 simple moving average flatten out, which is good because we don't want to see a negative sloping 20 simple moving average if we're going to be bullish on this market. So yes, I know there was bad news today, but ultimately it did not crash the market and we're still holding up above these very important support levels as well as still maintaining that short term bullish trend. Now one day doesn't set a trend and if we continue to see selling going into tomorrow, these things could start turning around and this short-term bullish trend could start reversing. So remember, if we start getting closes below the 50 EMA and we don't see this gap down at 331 and $329 hold up as support, things could start to look very bearish very quickly. So there's definitely risk in this market and we definitely want to protect ourselves with those stop losses. And right now, if we do get a close down below 329, that would be a huge concern of mine. However, I think if we still go down to 329 and see a positive bounce, this bullish trend could continue and we could get another attempt to bounce off of support and then make another attempt at closing back above 342. If we could get another attempt at 342 after it's broken and tested as support, we could start to head back up to new all-time highs on this market. But it's way too soon to say that's even in the cards right now and we need to trade with what's in front of us and we need to continue to watch the price action day to day and maintain this bullish trend if we're going to expect to see those new higher highs. So going over to a one hour chart, you can see on a one hour chart that we do indeed have higher highs and higher lows. So even in the short term, you can see that we still have a very bullish trend. However, the short term can change very quickly and we do see that we started to see some traction on the daily chart when we came back up to that $342 level. So in the short term, we are still bullish. And if you zoom out, you can see in the long term, we are also still bullish because we had that really nice bullish uptrend and there was no reason to believe that this was not just a correction to that grand scheme, large scale bullish trend that we've been witnessing ever since the crash in March. So we do have a little bit of trouble with today's price action, but we are still holding up above critical support levels and we can still say that we have that bullish trend. So stay objective, follow the price action, and follow the technicals, and don't let all the other noise prevent you from making a great trade. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the NASDAQ 100, and we are looking at the Triple Q's ETF, and we see the NASDAQ 100 did close below the 13 EMA, but still did get a close above that 20 simple moving average. Now on the NASDAQ 100, we did have a higher high form on the daily chart, but ever since we made that higher high, we have been seeing this pullback. Now we still have the gap open at 273 and $272. And if we look in the short term at a one hour chart, we do see that we did form a lower high in the short term and we did fail to break back above that $281 level. So that isn't saying we are in a bearish trend, but we are starting to develop a short term lower high and if we do come down and form a lower low, that would be a short-term bearish trend developing on the NASDAQ 100. So it does look like the tech sector is slightly weaker than the S&P 500. However, the tech sector was also the first sector to start looking stronger. So we are seeing a little bit of cool off in tech, but we still do have support level right here at the 50 EMA and the gap closure at 272. So I'm still looking to take advantage of this short-term bullish trend and I would like to be a buyer on the NASDAQ 100 around $272 and obviously set your stop loss just in case we're wrong 
if we do get a close below that price level, we will get stopped out. So remember, we still have our downside price targets in action until we form that daily higher high. So we're not 100% bullish on this market and we don't wanna be throwing all of our money into the long position right now. However, we do wanna start accumulating on support levels and protect our risk with well-placed stop losses that will mitigate our risk to the downside. Now, one thing I don't normally talk about on this channel is when I say buying at support levels and I talk about stop losses, I am talking about a daily price close. I'm not talking about intraday day trading. The majority of my trading is swing trading and there's not a whole lot of intraday trading going on. So when I say buy off of support levels or buy off of bounce off of support, you're really waiting until close to the close at the day and you're going to decide if the price action did what you expected and you would enter your position near the end of the trading day. If you try to trade intraday, you're getting more into a day trading and you could get a lot more whipsawing going on where you're entering and getting stopped out of positions before the trading day is even over and you could come out of that with a lot of losses. Let's just say you have three losses in a day. You're not doing yourself any favors by trading more than you need to. Look to enter those positions one time and go near the close so you know that you had the full day's worth of price action and you know you're making an educated decision. So on the NASDAQ 100, we do have that five EMA above the 13, which tells us we have that short-term bearish trend and that daily higher high at the $282 range is telling us that there's potential for this bullish rally to continue. It would be completely normal to start seeing an impulsive move to the upside a pullback into wave two and the start of wave three to break back above that resistance level and we could start forming higher highs. So in the short term, we're still bullish and we do see that 20 simple moving average turn from a negative sloping line into a slightly positive sloping line. So the 20 simple moving average is starting to turn for the better, which is telling us that the bulls are still in control of this market. Next up is the Dow Jones and we're looking at the DIA ETF and we do see the Dow Jones going right up to its daily higher high level right around $282 but ultimately the stimulus deal news made it come down and close below the five EMA. We're still trading above that 13 EMA and the 20 simple moving average, and we still have that five EMA trading well above the 13 EMA. So even the Dow Jones is still bullish and we still did get favorable price action closing above the 20 simple moving average. Now don't forget on the Dow Jones, we do have a gap down here below at 273 and 272, but if we can come up here and form that daily higher high above 282, the bulls are still fully in control and this market can continue to go higher even without a stimulus deal. So follow the price action and follow the trends. And right now we're looking to be a buyer off these support levels. On the 50 EMA, we're looking somewhere around $275 for a support level above that gap. And remember, these are just positions to start accumulating. You don't wanna throw 100% of your money into the market at this time, there's still a lot of uncertainty. And as we're going to get into next, when we take a look at the VIX, which is our fear indicator, we do see the VIX went up over 5.4% today, and the VIX is still well on its way into a very bullish trend. So while the VIX is going higher, we wanna get more defensive because the VIX is telling us that there's downside risk in this market. And now that the VIX is 29 and a half and it's getting close to the 30s, we could start to see minus four to 5% days yet again. And when the market is being very volatile, we don't wanna be doing too much trading intraday. We wanna to wait to see where those lows are gonna be and we wanna to try to buy off support levels and we wanna wait for those bounces to confirm that those support levels are holding up. So you can see on the VIX that the five EMA is breaking back above the 13, which is showing that this bullish trend is picking up on the VIX and we are seeing fear start flooding into this market. Anytime the VIX is in the high 20s or low 30s, that means there's quite a bit of fear in the market. And when there's a lot of fear, there's a good chance we could see retail investors getting scared out of their positions and we could start to see big money start selling into the weakness if they think that the market is going lower, they're not going to hold into their positions and we could start to see a waterfall effect. But right now we need to follow the trends and we need to follow the price action. And right now the VIX is just telling us to be more defensive. We don't need to panic sell and we don't need to worry about a huge crash coming because we do know that the Fed and the government are still propping up this market and there's really no reason to believe that we're heading for another crash. So let's take a look at the sectors and first up we'll look at the financial sector and we see the financials came right up to our resistance trend line and got rejected and closed lower. However, we still did close above all the moving averages and we do see that the five EMA is remaining above the 13 EMA and we're also trading above that 50 EMA. So overall, the price action is starting to reverse from that bullish trend but we need to see the financials form a daily higher high and we need to break out and close above this resistance trend line. So in the grand scheme of things, the financials are still in a bear market because we have those daily lower highs. 
but it does look like the trend could be reversing and we're waiting to watch to see if we're going to get a close above this resistance trend line. Next up is the industrials and we see the industrials got very close to its old resistance level but ultimately did get rejected and closed down above its 5 EMA but we still have that short term bullish trend and the price action is still short term bullish because we're closing above all the moving averages. So the industrials still have a chance to come up here and attack this resistance level. And if it could break and close above that resistance level, that will be a higher high on the daily chart, as you can see. And that'll tell us that the industrials are going back into a bullish market, which would be great news for the S&P 500. Next up is healthcare. And we see healthcare in a very similar situation, holding up above the 50 EMA and the 5 EMA still trading in that short term bullish trend. So healthcare needs to come out and continue to form higher highs. And if healthcare can form a higher high on the daily chart, that will also let us know that the S&P 500 is likely going to follow suit. Next, let's look at the US dollar and we're looking at DXY and we do see that the dollar did bounce off of its support trend line very well today in right on cue. So we did get the dollar to close back above the 20 simple moving average. And we see that that five EMA never actually crossed below the 13 EMA and we're starting to get a bounce to the upside which is a continuation of this bullish trend that we've been having. So remember a bullish trend is higher highs and higher lows. And we would expect to see the dollar to come up here and try to attempt to form another higher high, which if the dollar is going higher, we would expect to see the stock market go lower due to that inverse correlation that we've been witnessing. So look for the dollar to show continued signs of strength. And if we could get a close back above the 50 EMA, it looks like the dollar is off for the races and going higher. Next up is gold. And if we expect the dollar to go higher, we expect gold to go lower and gold is coming right up to our old support level testing as resistance and it does look like that resistance is going to hold up and it does look like gold's going to come back lower and maybe come down to the next support level at $1,800. We would be a buyer of gold at $1,800 if we see the support level hold up and we get a confirmation bounce and I do think that gold would be nice to have in your portfolio to finish out the year getting ready for that next stimulus deal. We would expect to see the dollar continue to weaken. And we would expect to see gold go into another bull market to end out the rest of the year once that stimulus deal is finally made. Next up, let's take a look at Apple, our market moving stock. And we do see Apple barely holding up above its 20 simple moving average and barely maintaining that bullish trend because that 5 EMA is still above the 13 EMA. So we're looking for Apple to hold up above the 50 and we're trying to maintain that bullish trend on Apple because it is a market moving stock. If we see Apple come down and close below its 50 EMA, we would be looking for Apple to come down and close this lower gap before that bull trend can resume. But right now, Apple is doing everything it needs to do to maintain its short-term bullish trend. And we really need to see a little bit more price action to see if that trend can maintain and we can continue to go higher. Next up is Tesla. And we do see Tesla coming back and doing a test of its breakout of this resistance trend line. And you can see that the price action got right back to the resistance trend line and close just right around the 20 simple moving average. So Tesla is in a little bit of trouble and it's struggling to break out of this consolidation, but it is still in a bullish setup and we still have that 5 EMA above the 13 and I'm still giving benefit of the doubt to the bulls and I would expect to see Tesla's next price target be $500 and make another attempt at breaking out to a new all-time high. So this resistance trend line is a great line to follow. And if we get a break back below that and we are closing below that 20 simple moving average, that'll let us know that Tesla is likely heading lower. Next up is Bitcoin and we see Bitcoin doing something very similar. It did break out of its resistance trend line and it is coming back down and testing that level as support. So we're looking for the resistance trend line to act as support and see if Bitcoin can come back up here and test this $11,000 level. If Bitcoin fails to break back above and test 11,000, we still have our support level at 10,200 and we still have our support trend line down around $9,800. So going back to the S&P 500, remember there is definitely risk in this market, but we do have important support levels that we could be buyers of and we just want to manage our risk with stop losses. So we have that short term bullish trend and when we have a short term bullish trend, we want to look for opportunities to buy off support. So look for support at the 50 EMA and the 20 simple moving average, which is right around $332 and $333. And we could come all the way down to $329 and close this gap and still maintain that bullish setup if we get a nice bounce and a higher high on the daily chart. Now remember, if volatility increases, we could see the market go sideways and we could bounce between 342 and down to $320. And we could start to see one of those kangaroo markets where we just kind of go sideways for a while and stay within this tight trading range of about a $20 range between 320 and 340. So that would be another great opportunity as a trader. Look for these support levels, add them to your charts and pay attention to these levels. And if you're seeing a support level hold up as support and you get that confirmation bounce, don't be afraid to make a trade and set your stop loss below that support level. So please remember to help me out by smashing that like button. I really hope these videos are helping you out. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel so you could follow along with all of my technical analysis updates. Thanks for watching everybody. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.